Yeah, uh, a few things. First, we didn't hit on this yesterday, but there were a couple series where Jalen Hawkins came in for Deron Harmon. Is that, what's going on, I guess, in that situation? No, I think you're looking way more into it than what it is. Um, we feel good about it. Most of those guys are up on game day. And as we evolve in the season, guys have different roles, different packages. And the more guys that we have that can play multiple roles, the better it will be. It is part of that, and, and maybe this goes for Richie Grant as well, who hasn't played as many defensive snaps. Is that trying to get them work at this point? Like, it, it, Is this something that you see going forward? I, again, I think here, here's all it is. There's guys that are young players. You look at Mayfield, the same plan we had to bring him along got expedited, right? He had injuries and he goes in there. And he played much better. That's why I said last week, you don't jerk the wheel with guys like that. You got to give them a chance to, to improve. So all of a sudden, you're not sitting there every time looking over your shoulder at one mistake. And then at some point, in the, in, you know, during a game or if you're going really wrong, you got to maybe shake things up. But like, I don't want got to give guys the chance to bounce back and play through mistakes. It was a rookie in his first game. You look at Richie. Rich, Richie's having a, a big impact right now on special teams. We think Richie will have a long, productive career, and there's a right way. And Eric and Duran are, are very uh, smart, savvy vets. And then Hawk, same thing. If those guys have been productive on teams. You know, the more you can get, the more versatile. I mean, it's a long season. And so the more you can build different personnel packages, the better off we'll be. And that's kind of where we're at with it. And where are you at right now with your opponent? Well, like of every position, if uh, we'll continue to churn the roster if, we, you know, we feel that's best for it. But the same thing, kind of, we got to evaluate with, no different than uh, Mayfield last week, you know. There's some things, and Cam would probably be the first one to tell you that, you know, a couple kicks he'd like back. Um, but we'll assess that throughout the week. And so, but that's every spot. If there's if there's ways we think we can upgrade this roster, we will. So just to be clear, because you only have one punter on your roster right now, will you bring punters in to work out and potentially sign one or two to practice? Probably. I mean, but we, you know, we, we have workouts every week, Michael. So. And then there's a lot of different things you can do these days because of the roster flexibility. Uh, give you a chance to have a little competition if you need it, or a little safety if something you know goes wrong, which we've done with the line. Uh, part of the same strategy last week with the line. So um, I, that's where I, I, I like the new rules with the roster flexibility. I think it helps. It helps you build depth and, and gives you that flexibility. Coach, where does um, Isaiah Oliver add? look like he was in uh, at safety at a couple of packages? Hey, people wanted to. Look, we got guys dropping for everywhere. Zay's done a really good job. Plays inside corner for us, that nickel spot, and he can play multiple roles. And so again, it goes back with the same th theme of versatility. Um, yeah, I don't know where that narrative came from that he was going to be a safety. He's always been an inside corner for us. The flex to go outside, and we feel like he can drop all over the field. The better off we're at, we are. Excuse me. So um, he's doing a decent job in his role. And so the six passes are twenty. Uh, yards or more, how did y'all break those down and uh, how do y'all try to, you know, maybe limit some of those explosive plays in the passing game? Well, you know, look, it's the ones that, that hurt you. Although, you know, those are, again, your different coverages you may be playing. Uh, obviously, you don't want to give up big passes, but, you know, we got to do a better job making them kick field goals and, and, then, and they get in the red zone. We gave the defense a short field. Obviously, I went forward on fourth and one, didn't get it, gave them a short field. Uh, you know, they had 21 points off turnovers, two tip pick sixes late. Uh, which, and then, you know, the one obviously coming out of half. You know, we didn't, you know, they got a short field. We had a chance to pick it right back. We didn't. They go down and score. So that's 21 points off turnovers. Uh, you know, short punt, like I said, the fourth and one. So we got to make sure when we go out there and, you know, people do gain yards, you got to make them kick field goals. So when you're in some of the zone defenses you're at, you don't get pressure or whatever, you know, they move somebody off the spot underneath, they got a couple back in there. The ones that kill you are the 40 yard plus touchdowns. I mean, you got to live with some of those. You don't want them, but if they get some of those chunks, you got to be able to rally to get them off the field. And Terrell, it was announced concussion, but we don't know if he went to the. Yeah, we're still in the evaluation now. process with him. So, again, I can give you more information as the week goes on. So he's not in the protocol yet? I, I'm not going to comment either way. D led, uh, just. We let the doctors do their job. I'm not a doctor, and uh, you know I don't want to. You know you've got to be very. Uh, we take those very serious. Anytime somebody says there's a head injury, they're all different. But I will let the medical professionals handle that. And um, will y'all look at the short yardage package given? Uh, sure, do you like? We'll look at everything. Or, look, or that was just a tough team. I, you know. There's a lot of things you go through there, and as a play caller, 
hey, what could I have done differently? Um, you know, the thing is, some of those, you got to get the play started. Uh, you know, multiple reasons. We, we weren't all coming off at the same time. Whether they let the noise affect us or not, you know, and then you're, you're backed up and, yeah, you look at everything. I mean, they did a good job there. We got to get off on the ball, give ourselves a chance. And then you look at other things you could do, uh, you know, where you're at right there. So it all comes into play. But that's, that's every week, D-Led, you know, when things don't work, you got to start, hey, schematically, what could I have done better? You look at some of the personnel matchups. They are tough. They pack it in there. And that's why you, I think you saw some, there's some productive runs, other spots. There's things that we felt we could have done a better job of. Um, but yeah, sure, certainly, that, that, that's all fair, D-Led. When things aren't, you don't convert third and one, third and one, and fourth and one. It keeps you up at night. And uh, just back to the secondary, you saw a lot of T.J. Green. How's he doing? Somebody I might have to. Yeah, no, out. he's he's another guy. You know, he started out at safety. Um, you know, he's got to have an impact for us on fourth down, and he came in there. And uh, you know, obviously the the one that's going to get highlighted. You know, you get the red zone matchup right there, one on one. But in, in the scheme of things, and the same thing with the rush plans. Um, you know, everybody. You know, when you can just win one on one, certainly up front or in man and in coverage, those are the plays that. You know, to me, there's there's a few guys that do that and do it well consistently. But I thought TJ competed, played well into the scheme, like everybody, just like coaches. There's things you wouldn't, you wish you had back. I'm sure the players feel the same way. Just follow, just follow. You, you, you brought up uh, uh, Jalen earlier. Uh, in what ways did you see the improvement from him? In a lot of ways. Look, he was going against a pretty good front, and I thought he stepped up, and that's what you want to find out about people. You know, it doesn't have the game that he probably envisioned to start. Uh, neither did I. And so he comes back, and, and that's what you find out about people. You know, it's you don't find out about people until you have some kind of struggle. You don't find out about the culture of a team until you, you get back. And, you know, there's no such thing as moral victories. But I do appreciate the way these guys fought. You know, you go down, and especially in the second half, 28 to 10, guys kept swinging, made, it, made plays. But ultimately, we didn't make enough plays to win. That's why it ended the way it did. They made the plays. We didn't, but uh, so you know those things were encouraging. But that, that's what you find out about players and coaches when things aren't going the right way. And I, I think that you got to give Mayfield a lot of credit. Nothing was perfect. There's always things we can clean up. But he stood up and he blocked some of the better guys in the league. We obviously saw um, um, Pitts make some nice catches. But how has he continued to learn from each tape and continue to grow? Have you seen that kind of steady Absolutely. improvement? Absolutely. Um, I think there's a lot of things that Kyle proved yesterday. There's some of the things that will never go on the stat sheet. You watch the tape, uh, you know, handle a lot of different jobs, which makes us better as an offense when he can do that. And, you know, he can play multiple roles for us. And so as he continues to grow and develop, I mean, that's why, that's why we drafted him. And so that's encouraging to see. But uh, with those added passes, I, it's, I'm asking, is that an offensive line thing? Or is, it, is that it's a, a combination of everything. Uh, you know, where you're at, you know, obviously you look at those, you know, the, the ones that happen, you know, when you're, depending on the scheme you're running, um, you know, how we dropped back 48 times, give or take, and uh, which was encouraging. Now you're talking about growth from the week, from week one to week two, and that's just the flow of the game, um, where we needed to go. But I think a lot of times too, we got to do a better job of understanding when guys aren't rushing, guys are tired, it's a hot, it's physical, you know, that's going to get that mush rush, and they did a nice job getting them. And we got to continue to work on that stuff to make sure that we can get those guys down, and we got to look at what we're doing schematically as well. And just the big serious question here, but what about Matt on that two-point conversion? Well, I told you guys we were working on speed. <laughs> so, uh, Is there a thought, I mean, I know you said that with AJ you're still taking it kind of day-to-day, but is there a thought that, you know, you're talking about flexing Isaiah out I mean, is there a thought in, in maybe trying that out this week? I mean, all options are on the table. You know, we'll have to adapt. We'll have to see where AJ's at. Um, but we got guys that can fill in and play multiple roles. So whether that's TJ, you know, Darren Hall, Zay, I mean, it just depends. We'll, you know, we'll know more as we game plan and see the, the health of the, of the team getting into Wednesday. I know Matt was talking a lot last night about honing in on details, and I know that he – he spoke, you know, at length about that. That was something that he kept bringing up. I was just curious, kind of like, when 
it comes to offensive details, like and when you're looking at fine tuning something, what are some things that may be obvious to you that aren't obvious to us in terms of those? Yeah, details? and you know some of it too is I think you see, um, you know, when you get in these games and you got long drives, and when guys get fatigued, you, you know the details do matter, and a lot of that affects that you may never know, but just what you may be asking the spacing on a route, which takes the timing off the quarterback. You know, maybe you're holding the ball a tick longer, you know, and then it looks like protection. So it all goes together. I mean, it, it's that way in, in all three phases. It's the subtle details that, you know, the ones that are obvious, and that's no knock on anybody. You know, you're watching on TV, and I think football is a great sport for TV, and you love the passion people have for it. But, you know, that's the logistical game. Yeah, I call it the game within the game. You know, the unintended consequences, guys get tired. You know, that's where – that's the stuff that keeps me up at night, too. You're, you know, you're, we're not at the right depth maybe here or there. Um, there was a lot of progress made, but not enough. And when you're playing really good teams on the road, and you know we didn't we didn't make enough plays at the end, and that's why it got away from us. I want to you know I'll go back to what you talked about with TJ Green before. On that goal line play, what's the philosophy between by putting him in there on in that package on that play against Mike Evans? Just because there's a lot of things. It's the way they get matched up. Depends on the call, Michael. Whether you're a man, you're in zone. Where you're at in the game, why you get you know to just sub people, and then you know they, it was, again it looked like a run alert, and they you know they liked what they saw over there, and and I, I expect TJ to improve, but you know you can't take away everything, and that's part of it, and sometimes it depends on the call, and then again you play against an experienced quarterback, most most offenses it's a game of you know cat and mouse, they see something they check to it, um, and yeah and. I said, I mean, it's a. They went to a, a run alert fade, I believe. Maybe they didn't. Maybe it was just a called fade, and he dropped back and threw it, and they made the play. And so, yeah, a lot of it is what what the call is, who's in the game, when, multiple reasons. Guy may be fatigued. Guy may be injured. A lot of things that go into it. You talked about it a little bit yesterday, but the pressure y'all got defensively yesterday versus a week ago is that more of what you feel like this defense could be? Well, I think it, it kind of goes back to, to where he asked me about offense, about the details. A lot of times in your rush plan, like I said, when, you, when you, you've got four guys that just win one-on-one -on -one consistently, it could be a nightmare. And you've seen that over history, you know, take over. But when you don't, it necessarily there's a lot of different ways you can affect the quarterback. And so with a lot of our rush plans, there was things we thought we, did, we weren't very consistent with last week, clearly, in Philly, and allowed, you know, escape the pocket, whatever it is. But I think where you saw improvement was a, was a, the play that Dante got it got on the sack fumble. You know he doesn't go you don't fly by the quarterback. He's able to counter rush. Coverage is where it needed to be, and he was able to come back and make a counter move and make a big play. It altered the game. Uh, so that was impressive. I think there's other other and it's all part of there's and I'm not going to give bore you or give away too many schemes, but it, it does take when you're running different pressures or you you know the way maybe you're asking guys it, it takes all eleven to do that. Every once in a while, guy just wins one-on-one, -on -one and everybody in the stand sees it, right? But I think what you're starting to see at times, and we got to do a better job in the red zone, is playing cohesive. And then a lot of that does go where you're setting things up in the rush. But I thought Dante yesterday, too, I mean, underrated. I mean, he's, he's, he's flying around and uh, doing his job and not trying to, you know, press and just go one-on-one -on -one all the time. Kind of sticking with the defense, going back to AJ, I think you look at the play that he, you know, ended up getting – on, mm -hmm. but it was a pretty spectacular play that he made. I mean, you talk, people talk all the time, the cliche is like you lay your body out on the field, yeah. but what type of example do you think he set in that moment? Well, yeah, no, it's it really two guys, you know, he goes over there and, you know, trying to, you know, different look for him maybe, and then, uh, you know, Zay's right there too. So both those guys are in position and AJ goes up there and he kind of shows off what, you know, why, why we believe he's got a chance to be a pretty good player for us if he keeps progressing, because he does. He, he drops back in there and in the zone, makes a hell of a play. Um, and then, you know, Zay was right in the right spot too. So that was encouraging. It was unfortunate what happened. But yeah, those, those guys were selling out. We got a group of fighters in there. Like I said, uh, we got to con continue to press and improve. And, uh, you know, obviously it starts this week with New York. You know, they're a couple days ahead of us preparing and we, we got our work cut out for us. Yeah, Coach Ed, but on New York, looks like it'll be a couple hungry teams trying to get a win. Absolutely. Dan and Jones, Saquon on offense, and a couple young pass rushers over there on defense for him. Uh, what do you uh, know about them uh, early this early in the week? 
Yeah, it, it, you know, Joe, Joe will have those guys ready to go. Um, same thing. I mean, this is a, you know, you don't want to be in this spot, but we are. It's a reality. We got 15 more to go. We got to, we got to get prepare ourselves to go up there and go win a football game. And we need to do it. They're, they're probably saying the same thing up in New York or New Jersey today. And so we know it's going to be a challenge. Go on the road. It'll be a tough football game. They'll be sound. It's a good scheme. So we know we got a work cut out for us. How does Saquon look uh, as he's making his way back from the, from the injury last year? Yeah, I could probably give you a better take on that on Wednesday. Uh, but we know he's a hell of a player. And he, he's gonna be, we're going to have to contain him. How much, you know, you say a couple days ahead, right? Like, how much of a true difference is that mini buy when depends you know, how you throw this early in the year? Yeah, it depends how you use it. So, um, you know, whether you're talking about, you know, recovery, or you're talking about just jumping on, you know, maybe the game plan, it can, it can help you if you use it right. You know, where you, the same thing, you could use it wrong where you can overthink everything and tear up a couple game plans twice, two, two or three times. So, Goes both ways, but certainly, you'd like to think it gives you somewhat of an advantage. Sure. Is it better to have it like now, or like when you guys have it in November, or having the early having the early normal buy? Yeah. Um, you know, it just depends. You know, one of those years, if you're if you're really beat up, and you're able to get guys back, you you would love to have that the real buy late in the year. But it is what it is. You know, that's it's a. They make the schedule, and we got to adapt. That's what they get paid to do, to make the best decisions for when Terry and I meet and go over the entire football staff. How do we want to handle the early bye? Obviously, we're going to London, which adds a different dynamic when you come back. And then what I call a mini buy, those Thursday night games. Um, and it's all set up. You know, We're on the road before, at least we're coming back home. You know, where, where it really can get tough is if you're on the road on Sunday and then you got to play again on the road on Thursday. That can make it even a bigger crunch in the week. But yeah, you got to plan that stuff out and you got to assess where you're at. Anything else? Yeah, just one last thing. You are the last punter, uh, punt off on the second. Um, you know, will, it, will, um, will you, can you see yourself, like last week I looked at everything and stayed with Jalen. Sure. Is it a possibility that Absolutely you all stay with Cam? Absolutely. You know, it's, as you guys know, uh, I tell you, it's a, it's a, it's a tough, tough business, uh, but we all know what we signed up for, and so there certainly, so you get in there, and we got we got to make sure we're doing the best, make the best decision for this team, but we also at the same time, and there's some positives Cam's done, and so we, we you know, I can probably give you a better assessment on Wednesday, just like we talked about with Jalen last week. You know, you, it's a fine line of, of not going crazy, jerking the wheel, but also giving yourself some options and, and some competition if you if we feel that that's best for us. But nothing's off the table, do you like? All right, appreciate you guys. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate it.